Here we have medium roast and we have dark roast. Okay. What about now? Which one would you like to try now? Medium. Medium roast? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, this coffee, I don't know how much you know about coffee, but uh, this coffee is a little bit different. We call it honey processed coffee. Later, the guide is going to explain you what's the difference. And the difference is basically about how we dry it, how we dry the seeds. On coffee, there are mostly two different types, Arabica and Robusta. Those are like the main species of coffee. In Costa Rica, by law, we only grow Arabica, okay? Mm -hmm. But in Arabica, there are hundreds of different types of Arabica, and all the different types of Arabica taste different, grow different, and they produce different, right? Mm -hmm. So, of course, we select the type of Arabica according to who are we gonna sell our coffee to, our customers, right? If we're gonna sell our coffee to people in, let's say, China, Japan, Korea, we select some different types of beans. We're gonna sell our coffee to people like, let's say, Italy, French people. Mm -hmm. We select different types of Arabica. Americans, Canadians, people in Central America, South America, we'll have different ways to drink coffee. Fresh. As the coffee gets brown, it's releasing all the good characteristics little by little. So we grind it at the moment. So it's always fresh. Always fresh, exactly. To start it, glass container, very seal, that's it, for one month. Mm -hmm. As the beans get roasted, they sell well for one month. After one month, if you want to keep it longer, and if you don't want to waste it, you can use the fridge. Freezer. But if you can avoid that, if you can use it in less than one month, it would be great, mm -hmm. because the coffee stays much, much better, okay? Uh, this is like a very traditional grinder. Later, the guy is gonna grind the beans here too. First, we always clean it. We remove the coffee that is inside, right? So we remove it, and that one, of course, we don't use it. That's probably coffee from yesterday, from the last tour, okay. so it's not fresh anymore. We just want very fresh coffee, okay? That's why we like grinding by hand because people so are able good. to smell it. it smells like chocolate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the time of extraction, the temperature of the water, and things like that. And to do that, normally we use methods like this. Like Chemex mm -hmm. with the paper filter. We have like a scale to control everything, right? But of course, at home, doing this in the morning takes a long time, okay? Mm -hmm. It's difficult. So sometimes people prefer to use um, methods like French press. Mm -hmm. Actually, I really like French press. But again, in Costa Rica, our grandmas, they use a traditional cloud filter. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, they never measure anything. But mm -hmm. they do it by the full spoon. Mm -hmm. So actually, at the end, they, they measure it, right? Mm -hmm. One full spoon is about, in grams, eight, 10 grams of coffee, something like that. And they do it like this. Do you all want coffee? Uh, yes? I'm okay for now. You're fine? Yeah. <laughs> she gets sick. Yeah. Really? Okay, so I'll do I'll do four cups of I'll do three. Yeah. Una. Dos. Tres. And our grandmas, they always do one extra. Just in case. Right? <laughs> in case if you want to try some more. Like that. And then we brew it slowly okay now i'm just waiting for the water to be ready here we keep talking about coffee and coffee all the time but i mean it's at the end you're the customers right mm -hmm. and people keep asking what's the best coffee what should i drink <laughs> and we say well you drink whatever you like you know and coffee it's all about personal taste and wine in Costa Rica, we have problems because the best coffee is all exported to the other countries Sometimes people ask, why in the US, Costa Rican coffee is cheaper than here in Costa Rica? Do you know why? Why it's cheaper in your country than here? 
here we produce it and here's more expensive than in US because of course most of the farmers they are small coffee farmers and for being small coffee farmers they all depend on big international corporations right mm -hmm. to sell their coffee and they sell their coffee in fruit and big international corporations like Starbucks and all those they just want to buy lots of coffee massive production to pay this away, right? so that's a problem and then they're able to sell it to you cheaper than here in Costa Rica so that's a that's a problem so they buy it super super cheap right and that's where fair trade and things like that starts like getting questioned if it really works or things like that but to be honest that's mostly marketing than anything else we been the water is ready amigos and then our grandmas well something important is to heat it a little bit we just get some water we get the grounds wet and right inside you will see the coffee making bubbles those bubbles it's all co2 that we should extract from the grounds CO2 is bad for people and also makes the coffee tasting bitter. The idea of brewing the coffee slowly is to extract every one of the good characteristics little by little. Sometimes people are not careful and they just pour the water with the sinks and this is very hot and pours lots of water. That's why we do it slowly. <laughs> I know, right? I can smell it right here. So how old is that clock? This one? Mm -hmm. Like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Mm -hmm. This one is very old. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. Very, very old. It's very interesting. You get the fruits, you get to smell them. and. You if you don't know, that's for chocolate, you never guess because the fruit doesn't even smell like chocolate. Even the beans, the unroasted beans, no, don't smell like chocolate at all. Mm. Yes. So it's like the Chemex and that. Put exactly. Together. If you see it at any shop that's not for flowers, amigos, <laughs> <laughs> it's for coffee, believe it or not. And it uses exactly the same filter. Mm. This one. It's a good wine. One kilogram of really good coffee could be very expensive. Last year, the most last year the most expensive coffee was produced in Panama, and the farmer got paid 1,600 US a kilogram of coffee. Crazy expensive. In Costa Rica last year, the farmer. A, who got the, most, the best price was, let me see, about 600 US dollars a kilogram of coffee. Wow. Crazy expensive. And it's interesting, it's a type of coffee that we mostly don't like. In my case, I don't like, too fruity, too. Mm -hmm. But cultures like Japanese, Koreans, Chinese, they love it. It's very soft, it's more like a tea, mm -hmm. it's something like that, it's different. So they pay lots of money for it. See, could you please turn your cups? Can you go back down, see? Santiago completa, man. Do you drink it black or do you add some sugar? I do black. At the end of the tour, you're gonna try them both. Now you're trying only medium. But at the oh, end, okay. you're gonna try medium and dark. I understand. Both of them, yes. I'm gonna bring some spoons. So what do you ladies think? I love it. It's like almost sweet with a, you know, it's like... Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. Totally different than... It's got a nice bite to it. A little bit bitter, but at the same time, like sweet. Well, because you're not used to drinking yeah. black coffee, you always add milk to yours. Hmm. 
All right, now it's time to go and do the actual tour. See how these babies grow.